Hey coaches, Coach Simpson. Appreciate you tuning in my YouTube channel. This week has been all about attacking the 3-4 defense. I think 3-4 is a great defense. I run the 3-4, okay? Uh, but there are areas that, like on any defense, there are bubbles that you can attack. So we talked about conflict players. We talked about running at smaller guys. We talked about formations the 3-4 doesn't really like a lot. Today we're going to talk about RPO game. Tomorrow we're going to talk about this last one, are all things equal and how do you exploit them if they're not okay if you'd like more information specifically on this in depth i've got a course on coach tube called attacking the three four with game clips diagrams and more as well but feel free to just watch free stuff too that's why i put it out there okay first of all let's fix this because i know probably some of y'all in the comments are thinking i'm not very good okay all right so let's talk about rpo game now as you can see on my shirt this is what we do, this is what I like to do, is put guys in conflict. So you have to kind of go back at all the lessons before, before you start building out RPOs. Who's the conflict player? Who are we wanting to run at? And who are we wanting to put in conflict in the passing game? What formations are we going to use to make a guy a conflict player? And then finally, now let's look at the RPO game. Who are guys that we can attack, that we have identified, have two roles? So I've kind of squared them off for you in the general 3-4. We look at different guys, different games that we want to attack. We can attack any of these guys. I call that our menu. In our menu, we can RPO any of the box areas you see on the field. Any of these guys with a one-word tag, we can RPO that guy. We can make that guy wrong. Okay. Now, as a coach, you have to go, okay, it's like when I walk into Denny's and I give you a 19-page menu, that's overwhelming. I don't have any idea. So you have to kind of start going, okay, what do we really want to run this week? So what RPOs really work for this opponent? And we're going to make sure we kind of limit that menu a little bit. I'm going to walk through just a couple quick ones that we do. Realize we can do more. So inside linebacker for us, we're going to run a lot of power type football this way. Buck sweep, belly. Okay, we've run some power. We may run some power read. We're going to run a lot of stuff where this guy crosses his face and runs that direction, okay? And a lot of our RPO game or our RO game, depending on our quarterback, is going to depend on that guy. We pull a guard a lot. Are you going to follow a guard? And if you do follow a guard, now we might start looking at trying to RPO you, okay? If you're going to scream in here and make tackles, we're going to have calls that make you wrong. And that's in that RPO game. Now our quarterback will call whatever we've decided that year. Some years it's been key. Some years it's been a different call. And we're going to read this player. Our guy's going to cross our face. If you fly this direction, we're going to pull the ball and either run it or we're going to run a route in behind you and pull the ball and throw it, depending on our athletes that year and the RPO we choose. All right, let's say we want to come out here and do the same thing as outside linebacker. So now we're gonna, on the snap of the ball, we may run some kind of bubble look and attack. And now we're going to attack this outside back. Sorry, I drew this up wrong. We're going to attack this outside linebacker and we're gonna make him pick. Quarterbacks are running right at you on a QB sweep. Are you gonna come hit him or are you gonna go cover the bubble? If you cover the bubble, he's gonna run. If you attack, he's gonna throw. Is that an RPO or is that an old school waggle play action that we kind of called an RPO? Yes, it's both. It's a very easy RPO. That's why the QB game RPOs are really, really easy and they're really, really complicated for a defense. So that's a way we can make this guy wrong. We're going to do the same thing in this RPO game on all of the conflict players. I don't have time to go through all of this. I do have an RPO segment on my website you can go there and you can get the video or you can go get the powerpoint and you can go through and look at in detail how we do this stuff but the goal is the same okay just the way we do it is a little different we're going to try to make these what we consider to be conflict players and again a conflict player is somebody who has to run two jobs whether that's run fit and cover or whether that's run fit weak and strong Whatever it is, we're going to find your two areas and we're going to read you. And that's where the RPO game was born. And that's where the RPO game is still very, very heavily used, even at the highest level. You're starting to see NFL teams 
It's also why a lot of NFL quarterbacks tend to struggle that came out of this game because you can see how simple it is. Look at one guy, and if that guy does this, you do this. You can't make the game any simpler for your quarterback, which is why I'm a huge fan of RPOs. And again, you can go to my website and you can find my RPO course. You can go to CoachTube and find it. There's 100 guys that have great RPO courses. You find their stuff if it's easier for you. But if you're not incorporating the RPO game into your offense and you're under center, I'm sorry, in the shotgun, you are behind 99% of the world right now because this is like stealing. And that's a very easy concept you're seeing right there. It doesn't take that long to put in, and it's something that really can wreak havoc to a defense. So hope you guys got something from that. I appreciate if you like and subscribe to this video. I've got one more coming up this week. We're going to talk about are all things equal and the 3-4 and how do you take advantage of that.